These are the top two ways that you can create a raving fan culture. What's going on everybody? Nick Santanastasso here and I help people master the art and science of building their brand, their business and their legacy through communication and through stages. Now, have you ever seen someone who had just a raving fan culture? I mean, their fans or their supporters go to all their events, they buy all their products and services, they get massive results. It's almost like a cult. You're like, what's going on inside of there? Well, what that is, is if you see someone or a company with a cult-like following, it's that's what we call a raving fan culture and that's one of the most amazing things that you can do because if you have a raving fan culture you know you're providing massive value your people are not only getting information but they're getting transformation and they will follow you till the end of time how many of you would like to know how to build raving fan culture so people will go to all your events buy all your products and services apply the information and get the transformation out of everything that you teach I'm gonna share the top two ways that I have induced raving fan culture into my communities and my products and my services and I think it could be really really beneficial for you so the first way that you can install or empower your people to have raving fan culture is what we call two identities. We call this the two identities. Now what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at some of the most successful books, some of the most successful keynotes, whatever it is, whenever they're speaking to a specific audience, they reference two identities. So for example, in my best selling book, Victim the Victor, there is an identity of someone who's a victim and there's an identity of someone who's a victor. Now why would we want two identities and what is the psychology behind this? Well the truth is when somebody comes into your community, when they come into your ecosystem, you want to show them where they are and where they can be and where they're striving to be. And one of the greatest ways that you can do that is name these two identities, right? You can have one of my mentors has a broke Joe and a woke Joe. We have stage amateurs and stage masters. And what does that do? It shows people two identities and it gives them the opportunity. You present them the opportunity to either step into victim or to step into someone who's victorious. You can either step into broke Joe or you can step into woke Joe. Shout out to Joe. Or you can step into as a stage amateur or you can step into the fact that you're a stage master. Now, how do you create two identities. Well, the first thing that you want to do is identify what is the not so good version of you. Maybe you five years ago, maybe you three years ago it was the broke version of yourself. You can name that person. One of my one on one clients, his two identities are hiders and seekers. Hiders are those who may have success in the surface level, but are hiding behind addiction, behind soothing, all that different type of stuff. And those that are seekers are the ones that step into the light, that deal with their trauma, that heal their wounds. So we're giving a contrast of the two identities. Now, what you want to do is for your community, you want to name the identities. You want to name the low identity and the higher identity. And what you want to do is you want to give the characteristics of the lower identity and give the characteristics of the higher identity throughout your whole entire presentation, webinar, whatever it is, podcast, you always want to anchor the two identities. So for example, stage amateurs, when you come into our community, stage amateurs are people who trade time for money. They trade time for impact. They maybe they only get paid on the front end. They don't get paid on the back end. They probably don't have a pipeline full of speaking engagements coming up. They probably don't have a pipeline of leads in their CRM that they can serve and they can nurture. They probably only have like one product and they're not clear in their messaging. You see what I'm doing? I'm describing all of the characteristics and all of the attributes of someone who's a stage amateur. Because the truth is most people that come in, if they ain't speaking at my level, which is a high level, they're probably a stage amateur. Now I give them the contrast by coming over here and saying a stage master doesn't trade time for money. A stage master knows how to leverage the stage on the front end and they know how to leverage the stage on the back end. A stage master knows how to work referrals so they always have speaking engagements to go to. A stage master knows exactly who they are, what the result that they get people, and how they're going to best serve them. And a stage master has a premium value offer all the way down to the freebies. They got this whole value ladder on the back end, so they stop trading time for money. Stage masters aren't road warriors. They're not on the road 80% of the year. You see what I'm doing? I'm letting people identify where they are and where they want to be. So by the time they're done with the book, by the time they're done with the keynote, by the time they're done with the podcast, by the time they're done with the whatever it is, your, the webinar, you want them to have the hat, the identity of the higher version of themselves. And when you make your call to action and when you make your offer, they're not going to make it as a stage amateur. They're going to make it as a stage master. And now you've just shifted their identity. One of the most powerful forces that allows people to change their life and business and their personal life is an upgrade or an evolution of identity. And if you can do that with your people and they step into this new identity and operate as their 2.0 self, that is one way you can build raving fan culture. Now, the second way that you can build raving fan culture is the first one we got two identities. The second one, which is pretty cool, is what we call 
a manifesto. Now, what is a manifesto? Well, a manifesto is a passage or this paragraph that describes that identity, that describes that person. So for stage masters, we have this pretty decent sized one that when people come in, they read the manifesto and this is the cultivation or this is what stage masters represents. And so now you're giving people this passage or this rhyme or this paragraph of things that they can relate to that is gonna anchor them to becoming a stage master. And one of the greatest things that you can do is when people come inside your community, one of the first tasks or homework or heart work, whatever you want to call it, that they can do inside the community is like, hey, read over the manifesto. And when you're done reading over the manifesto, I want you to create a video and interpret or articulate what does it mean to you? What does that manifesto mean to you? And this makes people feel like a family. This makes people feel like a group. And they have this manifesto, these words that anchor them to being a stage master or whatever it is. And they'll always remember how it made them feel. You see, my friend, communication and building raving fan culture isn't a about always the information and the things that you say. Mostly and the majority is about how you make people feel. And if you really wanna make people feel seen, heard, safe, and a part of a family, part of a community, you do these two things. You have two identities so they anchor the higher identity that they wanna be, and you have a powerful manifesto that anchors what that identity is about, what you represent, and what's the vision for the community and where they are heading. This is how you get people in alignment. This is how you anchor your product, your service, your community, your identities to their emotions and their nervous system. And this is how you build raving fans that will come back every single time because you went above and beyond to make them feel seen, heard, and acknowledged. Because the truth is there's people out there 40, 50, 60 years old that have never been heard, seen, or acknowledged that feel invisible. But guess what? When they come inside your community, when they come inside my community, they know what identity they're operating out of and they have a manifesto to lean on that reminds them of who they are, where they're going, and what their mission in this world is. This is how you build raving fan culture. If you like this, click the like button, comment, subscribe, your biggest aha, your takeaway, and hit the bell because every single week we're dropping fire flames just like this one. What's going on? Listen, if you like that video and you thought that was fire, you probably like one of these videos. And so I'd highly suggest you full immerse and you dive into these because everything we post right here is gold. Click on this one. These are the two best ways to create raving fan culture inside of your community. The first way is two identities. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, every single presentation I give, every single book I release, every single webinar, whatever it is, anytime I'm speaking, I'm always anchoring two identities. You have stage amateurs and you have stage masters. And I describe what an amateur is and I describe what a master is. This gives your audience an opportunity to step or hop into the higher identity and take action from that place. And the second way to build raving fan culture is a manifesto, a passage, a paragraph that represents who you are, where you are, where you're going, and the mission in the world. Because it's not the information that you're giving your people and your students, it's how you make them feel. And with a manifesto, you make them feel seen, heard, and acknowledged, and they know they're a part of a community that is making big waves, big impact, and big transformation.